Hello, welcome back to the woods. Now, I think I've spoken about this before, but we have this amazing ability to take something that is really, really simple and make it really overcomplicated. And it's true in all walks of life, if you think about it. But it even creeps into bushcraft. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. Something that was really simple and seems to have been made really, really complicated. And that thing that I want to talk about is actually bushcraft shelters. Because back when I started doing all this many, many moons ago, it was a relatively simple affair. But what I've noticed more and more, particularly in the last couple of years, that it seems to have got a lot more complicated in as much as you need tools to put them together. You've got to have an ax, you've got to have a saw, you've got to have an entrenching tool, you've got to have cordage. And I see some wonderful photographs of these amazing bushcraft shelters that look like they've actually been drawn up by a draftsman. Lots of flat edges, neat angles. To me, it doesn't look quite right. To me, a bushcraft shelter should be something that is simple, that is made with your hands, your imagination, and not a whole lot else, not even cordage. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna show you how to put together a bushcraft shelter with just that, your hands and your imagination. So the first thing that you're gonna need is a suitable location. You want ground that's nice and flat and level. It also wants to be well drained. It doesn't wanna to be too soft to touch because the chances are that's because the ground is a bit boggy and when you, you wake up in the morning, you'll be in your own little paddling pool. So ground that's well drained. Somewhere where there are no animal tracks running through and also somewhere where the ground is free of hazards. So anything that's sharp, anything that's lumpy and bumpy, anything that could harm you or make you uncomfortable. So check that all out as well. Also in that location, you want materials close at hand, ideally. You don't have to walk for miles to gather everything that you need. You also need to check above you as well. Check that the, the trees are suitable, that there's nothing that's rotten, any big overhanging branches up there that could break off during the night and fall down onto your sleeping space. And what I also do is check to see how much vegetation is actually up there. Ideally what I want is lower vegetation, higher vegetation because that will all add to the weatherproofness of my shelter. Now the next thing you're also going to need because you're not going to be using tools or cordage is in that location a suitable tree or trees. Something with a, a side branch sticking out that's at a reasonable height, not too high, not too low, but a height that is probably about your chest height. That seems to work for me. If there isn't a side branch sticking out, then you could go to a point where you get maybe two trees close together that cross, and you can then rest <coughs> your supporting pole in where the two trees cross. And that's the other big thing you're gonna need a long supporting pole that's nice and strong. Next thing I'll do, I'll just clear the ground underneath that pole just to check that the ground is clear. And when I do that, I do that with my boots, not my hands, because if there is anything sharp and nasty down there in the undergrowth, then it could cut my hands. So I use my boot to clear the ground. I'll then check that the pole is long enough by laying underneath the pole and reaching up to see if I can touch the tree behind me. I should also be able to sit up in the shelter without banging my head. Next thing I'll do, I'll just clear the ground underneath that pole just to check 
that the ground is clear and when I do that I do that with my boots not my hands because if there is anything sharp and nasty down there in the undergrowth then it could cut my hands so I use my boot to clear the ground. I'll then check that the pole is long enough by laying underneath the pole and reaching up to see if I can touch the tree behind me. I should also be able to sit up in the shelter without banging my head. With that done, what I'm then gonna do is take two small sticks and I'm just gonna reach across with my right hand and stick the stick in the ground by my left shoulder and then I'll do the same on the other side. And what that tells me is how wide my shelter is gonna be. There's no point in building an overly big shelter. It just wastes materials and wastes calories. All you need is a shelter that is just big enough for you. So it should be just long enough, wide enough, and tall enough. Now, once I've got that ridge pole in place, the next thing I want to think about is my bedding, actually what I'm going to be sleeping on inside my shelter. You can use pine boughs, you can use leaf litter. In the summertime, I tend to use bracken and you want to get a really good covering of it. Don't skimp on it because that's going to be your mattress that's going to create that cushion, not only for comfort, but also for warmth between you and the ground. So what I tend to do is I'll gather large bundles of it and I'll lay them down with the stalk ends running towards the base of the shelter and I'll lay them in. I'll get a good layer and then I'll layer another layer on top and I'll keep going until the shelter is almost full to the top and then I'll lay on it just to compress it and see how thick it is then once it's compressed and ideally you sort of want a good 10 to 12 inches of bracken underneath you once it's compressed. Now, with your mattress down and your supporting ridge pole up, what you're then going to do is start collecting all of the bits of wood that are going to form the sides of your shelter. The beauty of this shelter, because it's got a sloping ridge pole, is you don't need all long poles. With the lean-tos, you have to use lots and lots of long poles. With this, you don't. You can go for short ones at the base and the longer ones nearer the top and you're going to need lots and lots of them so get them gathered and pile them all up next to where your shelter is going to be. Once you've got all of those poles and you're ready you're going to start placing the poles against the shelter. Now I always start with the longest poles first, the ones closest to the tree, and I lean them against the tree. 
coming off that ridge pole so that gravity is all holding the shelter together because there's no cordage in the shelter you just want gravity and weight to hold it all together so start arranging them tallest gradually going down the ridge pole to the shortest try and get them as close together as you can try and find ones that are relatively straight if you can't find ones that are straight put the bent curved ones in as tight as you can and then use other sticks to plug the gaps but either way the better you plug those gaps the better Now once you've got all of that wood on the sides, check it again for size, see if there's any alterations you need to make on it. Also check out for little branches that are sticking through on the inside. Now, you've got to start gathering the leaves. Now the leaves are going to be what cover the outside of the shelter. Number one it's going to give you insulation because it's going to be a very thick layer of leaves all over the shelter. Also each one of those little loose leaves of the leaf litter acts as like a little roof tile so it's going to help to keep you dry inside. Also of course you've got the vegetation above you and the trees above you which are also going to help to disperse the rain before it actually gets to where you are in the shelter. Now we could gather up those leaves with our hands and carry them over in bundles, but that's gonna take quite a long time. Instead, what I do is use a smock or my waterproof jacket, I'll turn it inside out, I'll scrape my leaves up, and then onto the bare earth that I've just cleared, I'll place my waterproof jacket inside out on the ground with the outer side facing uppermost. I'll then move all the leaves across onto that jacket and fill it up with a great big pile of leaves. I then unearth the two zips, pull them up together and that's all the leaves contained in almost like a, a bag and it makes them easy to carry. But what it also does is it means I can use each bundle of leaves a bit like a building block and I start at the base and I'll go all the way around the base and once I've gone all the way around I'll then with my next lot of leaves I'll put another layer of leaves on top of that. So it's almost like working with blocks and you keep going 
until you get right to the top. And this is where the other advantage of having your leaves held in something, it's much easier to get a large quantity of leaves higher up on the shelter. Now, as a guide, when you're putting these leaves on, ideally, they want to be about an arm's length deep. So a really good depth. And the more you put on, the warmer you're going to be and the more insulated you're going to be. So there you go, that is your shelter done. And they are a great, great shelter. They're warm, they're weatherproof, they will also help <coughs> to keep the sound out. Once you're inside, it's actually very good at deadening the sound. So you will sleep quite nice and soundly in there. They can last, well, they can last for a night if you want them to, or they can last for months. It's entirely up to you. You just, as the leaves start to settle down you just add more leaves if you're in there for more than one night well your second night is usually you, you do your home improvements you learn where the lumps and the bumps in the mattress is you learn where the, the little bits of light are coming in or the drafts are and you get those fixed but it's a nice simple shelter it takes anywhere between about four and six hours to make depending on uh, you and the location and how much there is in the way of materials around where you are. Why don't you get out there and give that a go? Don't worry about the, the Instagram perfect ones with the straight edges and the beautifully cut logs. You don't need them. Go for one of these. It's a proper bushcraft shelter. Get out there, give it a go. So there you go, that's my guide to making a proper, simple bushcraft shelter. Get out there, give it a go. It's a lot of fun to do. I had loads of fun doing it. It, it took me about years putting a shelter up like that and then sleeping in it. 
this time of year I just chucked a, a woolen shirt on underneath my smock and I was plenty plenty warm that and my woolly hat it was lovely a really really nice night out in the woods if you enjoyed this video then hit that thumbs up button and if you haven't already like and subscribe to the channel in the links box down below there's one of those little link tree links if you follow it through it'll take you over to my social media the Facebook Instagram etc and there is also a link down there to my Etsy shop and to my patreon page now the Etsy shop uh, is waiting a resupply at the moment there are my little EDC light pouches I think there's a, a leather badge left I'm just waiting for a load more of my woven green craft patches to come through I'm all sold out on those and I've just taken delivery of a load more parachute silk ready for some uh, of my survival scarves also by popular demand looking at making up some more of the guide haversacks after the the video that I featured my little scouting haversack I had a lot of people saying will I be selling those simple answer is yes I'm just waiting on some fabrics to come in at the moment and then we will start getting them cut and made up so keep your eyes on the shop <clears throat> Patreon over there, if you want to guarantee getting your hands on any other kit in the shop before it's released to everybody else, then become a patron. They get the early heads up, they also get a discount on all the kit. So if you want to be one of those people, get over there, follow the link. I think that's everything. I've been Neil, and until next time, stay safe in the woods.